Oh, uh-huh. welcome back, God. Praise you. Jesus, yeah. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're recording. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> We're good to go. Well, with that, ladies and gentlemen, it's Friday night, and welcome back to another edition of this, the Knockoff Podcast. Your boy Briss on and on here, joined to my right, Danny. What's re- up? Knockoff regular. We got Chris here across from me. What's up? And uh, Mr. Weary over there, special guest, ladies and gentlemen. We got Jared over on the corner here for his first time to throw down. There you go. Listen, we got uh, we're forty eight out. 48 hours out from UFC 201. We'll get straight into the fighting first up, I feel. We've got some good fights on this card this weekend. UFC 201 pay-per-view headlined by Lawler and Tyron Woodley. Who you got, boys? It's a fucking crazy one, man. Like, uh, any fight that a fucking Robbie Lawler is in is just like, you know, it's like that infographic I posted on the uh, Instagram today. It's like, you know, out of his last six fights, like, there's been, you know, fight of the night, fight of the year, fucking just crazy wars every time that guy steps in the cage because he's just a fucking animal, man. Earns every single letter of his fucking nickname, Ruthless. You and, know? And, and maybe that, that's the answer to how this fight goes down, is Robbie Lawler has a lot of miles on the clock in terms of... And, and there's a lot of, I guess, conversation around that lately about, you know, every single one of his fights is just a war. And, you know, and, and he takes a lot of punishment. But, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of also stories getting around about Robbie Lawler regarding his training days when he was sort of around strike force and when he used to fight at middleweight and things like that that he he never used to do heavy sparring like never ever used to that was never part of his training sort of you know coming through and all that sort of stuff so maybe he is only really starting to get miles on the clock now who knows that's it like for woodley to walk in a, into a shot after not fighting since january of 2015 this is a huge occasion for him to come in here and expect to go 25 minutes with robbie because mm-hmm. we know robbie goes deep and he gets better as the fight goes on. And and Tyron Woodley gets gun shy too. You know, we, we've we've seen that with him before in the in the Rory McDonald fight and stuff like that. Is when he sometimes feels like he's out of his depth on his feet or he's not finding his rhythm, he he just goes missing. You know, and he, and he he shells up. But when Tyron Woodley fires and when he throws and and when he fights that fight like he fought against Josh Koscheck. I mean, he, he can fucking put anybody out. He, he is, is a an devastating striker. enormous fucking welterweight, eh? That dude has to be the biggest welterweight on the roster, you reckon? Jacked. Right up there. Now that Lombard's sort of gone back to 85, yeah. he's right up there. He's an absolute physical specimen. He's cut a fuckload of weight, man. I wonder if the, you know, the IV band and shit like that might affect a fighter like Tyrone Woodley. I don't know. This will be know. the first time we see him under it because he's had fucking been out for that long, man. Yeah, That's true. the thing. He's walked into a shot, so... But as you say, Chris, too, with Robbie just being in all of these just out-and-out out barn burner fights, if you look back to these guys, your chin doesn't last forever. No. And at what point does it start taking an effect? We've seen the Liddells, the Vandalays, these sort of warriors that go in and just let it hang out like that. It doesn't last forever, and Tyron's got a guy who causes power. And if he does hit him, we're going to fucking find out. Oh, definitely, man. There's there's only one one undefeated thing in, in history, and that's time, man. You know, like, I mean, time is undefeated. It just gets everybody eventually, unless you're Floyd Mayweather and, you you know, you keep your gloves hung up. But, you know, eventually everyone loses at some point, and that's why we all tune in. Every single fight is because you know that as long as this person can reign and as long as they can be at their devastating best – it doesn't last forever. Someone's always going to come in and beat this person at some point, and this will be. This could be the fight that I'm watching where that happens. And that's exciting. Oh shit, yeah, man. I think that's why, like, you know, you watch a, a streak like a John Jones or something like that, and you just you, it's bated breath you, that you're watching mm. just because of what we've seen, man. You know, like champions just getting knocked off their perch, like hype trains getting well and truly derailed. It's just at the end of the day. It's a fist fight, man. And there's two people that go in there with a 50-50 chance of fucking knocking the other person out. Like, it's just, you know, I fucking laughed today. I watched that um, Nate Diaz on Conan O'Brien. <laughs> oh, I haven't interview. seen it. Oh, man, it's fucking gold. But, yeah, and he's like, you know, in all, you know, obviously fucking Conor McGregor style lead up and shit, it's all about confidence and stuff like mm. that. And, like, Nate was saying, like, they were talking about, you know, uh, Conan was like, oh... I hear you get, like, anxious before fights and stuff like that. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm pretty much just figuring I'm going to get knocked out every fight. So I just I just deal with that. And yeah. if I go in and I don't get knocked out, it's pretty good, man. Like, yeah, fucking man. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, that's a way truer attitude to have about it, you know? It's like, yeah, you're fucking going to be terrified. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just not a new experience for Nate, though. He's just been there for so many times. Mm. Now he's just going to a fight. Yes, this 
one's bigger and there's more on the line, but he just goes in and does his thing too. Did you did you see McGregor Diaz one weary? Yeah, I did, mate. Yeah. What do you think? I thought it was good. Fucking I was entertaining. Just, I was happy to see Connor go down, to be honest. Yeah, Me yeah. too, bro. Me mate, too. Did you fucking I like in my Googling today, I didn't even realise this, but apparently Justin Bieber tweeted after the fight. Yeah. And tweeted um it, it, like it's obviously old news or whatever, but yeah. like first time I saw it, man, and he's fucking like basically a huge Conor McGregor fan mm. or whatever. And then so after the fight has posted some video like cheers, he's still the champion or something like that. But the caption says something like all respect to Nate, but his style is terrible. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Yeah. You've done a few like, yeah. you know, boxing sessions and shit. And all of a sudden you're telling Nate Diaz his fucking style is terrible. Somebody who would like, you know, wipe wipe his ass with you mm. like a fucking dirty Kleenex. And like. and I, I suppose it's but in, in a way, and certainly obviously you're publicising it. So that's probably the, like the, the first thing, but... We all do that in, in some sort of way. You know, we're all armchair critics and we all yeah, sort of, fair. you know, have negative opinions on things. But, yeah, when you have, fuck, however many tens of millions of followers or whatever, it just amplifies your voice. Yeah, you yeah, know? and so you can fuck up easily yeah. like yeah. that. You can <laughs> yeah, be, oh, yeah, shit, yeah. I probably shouldn't have <laughs> fucking said that. <laughs> <laughs> he he might have had a few drinks yeah, late night. Yeah. Like, I probably could have worded that differently. Like, yeah. oh, respect the name, but your star is terrible. Like, yeah. fuck, yeah. wake up the next day, like, oh, fuck, TMZ fuck. just running with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who cares what your style's like anyway? It's a win and lose sport if you win. Then yeah, bingo. You know, and that's exactly what Nate said on that interview today. He's like... Pretty sure fucking whoever wins the fight is the champion or whatever. Like, I can't remember what the fucking thing was, but he was basically mm. saying, you know, who, I won the fight, man. Like, so there's no talking about it, you know? Like, I fucking choked you out. I won yeah, the fight. Yeah, like, yeah. And if I didn't choke you that's, out... That's who's the better fighter, basically. Like, I would have I would have knocked you out. Yeah, you, know? you, you like, were going to get pounded you out. You were going to get pounded out. Yeah, yeah he, exactly. He, he, he would have been unconscious or, or asleep either way. He <laughs> did... He did make him quit. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What are the uh, What are the other notable fights on um, two hundred one? Uh, Matt Brown, Jake Ellenberger. Matt Brown's always fucking good. To yeah. It's It's a little bit of a light on card. Like we, we were sort of talking about that earlier. That you know the the cards probably not had doesn't have the depth that some other cards have. But you know, as is always the way the names. Like, yeah, I mean sometimes cards are just burners because of the fights that are on them, and sometimes yeah. it's to do with the names, yes. but. It oh. doesn't. Uh, it doesn't chill for long. Like that, it is. It's got a bit of that one nine nine two hundred hangover as well. Yeah. Like oh, feel, feel big these cards. cards. Like they've had their grand final week for the moment. This is before we build it up to the big end of year shit. Yeah, like true. The, the way it sort of goes. But with the uh, with the sale, with everything that's going through as well. Did you see? Uh, did you see Mark Hunt blow up on the MMA hour? And it's it's still unfolding. Man, he went on on an absolute tirade on Ariel's podcast in ape shit just called UFC and USADA and everyone out just so hard, you might see him go elsewhere. You don't know what the new owners would be like with these guys. Like, yeah. He'd be pretty ropeable about that whole situation, it's man. It's like the third, third time he's fought someone at heavyweight who's pissed hot. Yeah. He yeah, has a right true, to be pissed. True. The funniest thing was, I mean, it's like 6.20 in the morning as he's calling in to suit American time in the afternoon over there when Ariel's doing it live. He's in his kitchen like, fuck USADA, fuck Brock. Fucking big white cheetah, fucking big monkey jamming fucking needle in his poo shoot, all this sort of shit, like going off his brain. And you can just hear his little kids in the background getting ready to go <laughs> off to school, man. Oh, oh man. It's it like, ooh, ooh. It's a little peek into the uh, Mark Hunt house, maybe. Yeah. Like, it was all, oh, cool, about, all yeah. cool about it. Yeah. Like, great guy, great family man. Don't get me wrong, but it's just hilarious hearing him go he, off in front of the room. He 100% should get s- not all of all of Brock's purse, but he should definitely get some of it. You know, I think that that's a, a good structure. Yeah. I think that's a good structure that, that they should move towards is that less of that money should go to the athletic commissions or, or the anti-doping associations and more like a little bit of it anyway, a portion of it should definitely go back to the dude who was just bashed by a dude jacked on steroids. When he's been paid seven or eight figures... Allegedly, exactly. like, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. It's uh, fucking eight should go back. But uh, so t- uh, on this edition, who do we want to throw under the bus for uh, doing steroid use? Who are we calling, boys? <laughs> oh, uh, well, uh, <laughs> you know who I was thinking this week. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, we haven't, haven't forgotten about you from last week either, Hendrix. <laughs> <laughs> Each, each sport would just be rife with it, you know. Yeah. It, it'd be so crazy to, you know, to see a sport that didn't have some sort of people juicing in it. So that's some crazy news. Did you see that with the, the whole Russian Olympic yeah, team? Nuts, oh shit! Like to to 
Putin will be fucking furious. Mm. Those like IOC people or whatever, like, are good as dead. Yeah, yeah. I read an article about it on on um, the conversation fucking during the week. I think the first ever instance of doping was at the 1968 Mexican. There was Mexico w- City. Mexico City. That was the first time they ever busted people. 68. And that yeah, yeah, it's going back a ways, man. It's just like, you know, and, and that's like the first time that people got caught. And that I think after that it was when they came up with WADA or whatever. That person must have just been that obvious back then. Like they wouldn't have been switched onto that shit. He must the have been. The testing would have been rudimentary as fuck. Yeah, yeah. He must have been just fucking glowing. Yeah, just <laughs> juice to the gills. Well and then who was was it Linford Christie? Was the fucking or yeah. Michael Johnson. Ben Johnson. And um Ben Johnson. Michael Johnson? Bon- ben Johnson was ben the Canadian that was pissed hot in was 92. He the 100 and 200 metre runner? 100 only. Yeah. Who was the 100 and 200? Oh, there's been so many over Johnson, the years. Ma- Michael Johnson ran 4 and 2. 4 and 2. That's yeah. who I'm thinking yeah, of. He, he pissed hot, didn't he? he won Carl it. Lewis yeah. as well. Carl like, Lewis. I think he was who was, a four who was the female runner? that killed it in Sydney in 2000? Marion Jones. Marion Jones. Oh, yeah. Juicer. Oh, so many. Synonymous juices. with athletics. Yeah. Her, sure. hus- her husband, Marion Jones, won the shot put gold medal in Sydney, pissed hot. Just yeah, both yeah, on it. Right, yep. CJ Hunter. Can't believe yeah, Usain is going to another Olympics. Usain and Phelps. That is absolutely throw throw Usain up. Like yeah. shout shout out to our boy Phelps as well. Like he, yeah. he knows how to get down. <laughs> 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 you boys are obviously <laughs> juicy. <laughs> like, I, saw, I saw a saw a really good meme the other day about the fact that both of those dudes love to get lit. Yeah. But oh. that both of the guys guys goes chuff in their in their downtime to you know to relax and whatnot. And, and it sort of said that, you know, you're talking about the, the fastest person in the pool in the world, effectively, and the fastest person on the land in the world, and both of them chuff, refer to fucking relax. Yeah. You've seen that video. He knows how to uh, he knows how to hit one as well. Oh, you yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I guarantee they're not fucking huffing cones all day long, though. Oh, <laughs> n- not at all, not Puss- at all. Pussies. <laughs> <laughs> How bad do you want it? Like, yeah. <laughs> Not I, I love how you're always looking for people in the, around the world to justify your habits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look how good this guy's doing. He's smoking exactly. Billy. Yeah, he's smoking Billy. Total exception yeah. to the rule, yeah. but it's like, yeah, see? It's, it's, it's just, yeah. just, just cherry picking the good ones and just like leaving out the thousands of fat cunts who are just sitting around <laughs> on their like, on their ass to eat Maccas playing fucking like, Starcraft. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, it's a, a horribly... Horribly th- like unhealthy habit that I never got into it was playing video games and you know for extended duration and whatnot. Yeah. Although probably early days of like I'm 32, so probably early days of maybe oh like maybe Master System 2 was probably the first console that I reckon I had. Yep. Um, but then I probably tapped out around about the Nintendo 64 era. I reckon. Yeah, that was a fucking legit console. Like you were always more into it than I was. Uh, for people that don't know, Chris and I are brothers. And so I was always able to fucking game on on Chris's or already ha- already bought consoles. So I was into that 64 though. That was sick. I could still play that now. I could still play Mario Kart for sure. That's a mm. sick. That's it. Like you set up. I, I was. A you got into the Sony's, eh? Yeah, we had we had Sony's. My brother and I. We had uh, everything through like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, into PlayStation One. Two, three, and four. We've had. Like, I've, I've owned all of those consoles Shit. now, and still. Still game from time to time. Like I've moved recently and haven't uh, haven't turned it on at the new gaff or anything. But if, if I have some downtime during the day on like a RDO or something, I might turn it on for two hours, just play some sports games and shit. Like, do do you play? Do you have a, a PlayStation? Well, I've got I've got a PlayStation, but it's basically um, I've, I use Netflix on it. Ah, uh, that's right. You uh, do too. I yeah. do have some games sitting around somewhere, but I never never had them when I was younger. Like I remember you had the. Um, that Nintendo and that and you just play Goldeneye and I, I just sucked at it so I just sort of got got Jack Goldeneye yeah. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah. too busy on the fucking Tinder mate yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if only they had it when I was 10 yeah. oh. <laughs> mate, that, that's a crazy thing of when you come out of a relationship that you've been in for a long time and you don't realise and you, that the world has evolved into something like online dating you know because you you really sort of if you I, I came out of a relationship and then when I came out of it there was all of a sudden like online dating and it was just like a mind fuck you know did you go into a relationship in like the 80s because I'm pretty sure fucking online dating like oh yeah that's AOL true AOL spec yeah like. okay okay <laughs> I'm, I'm talking more in an accessible <laughs> app form yeah, iPhone uh, fuck apps I've been like, yeah, chatting yeah. online with babes all day. yeah exactly <laughs> like, yeah like we've, all, we've all had a membership into that world before and 
a lot of the time I found and it was just a lot of fuckery on there as well. Like just a lot of back and forth. It came to the crunch like, look, let, let's meet up this time. Oh shit, like friends had an asthma attack. Like I've, uh, I've got to be yeah, there or yeah. there's just so much shit. Well, either, that, either that or I just couldn't fucking close. Like. Well, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a weird thing though, man. Like oh, it's fuck. like, uh, it's fucking like, it's like a blind date. It is a blind date basically, but it's this, you know, like I, re- I fucking actually read an article about it the other day about how the, you know, the concept of judging somebody completely on face value, like the swipe right, swipe left thing or whatever. It's just like, you know, that's that's never going to lead to fucking, you know, it, it might be odds that you just happen to meet somebody like via that way, but completely judging somebody solely based on like an airbrush photograph and like a witty three word fucking bio and stuff it, it's like it's such a disconnect from how human beings are actually meant to meet and shit and th- like that and that's the fuck thing is that you know you, you're pretty much in one way or another getting catfished every single chick that you end up going on a <laughs> date with you know i mean yeah. not shout out to i've shout definitely had some, catfish I'll, i've definitely had some decent ones off there but and and i'd be probably be catfishing a whole bunch of the birds on there too you know like everyone's photos on there are like these you know, warm lighting, 85 degree angle shots where, you know, you're looking as, as good as you can. The and then best photo you've ever taken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like laying it out there. Yeah, best photo you've ever taken. Then you catch up with them and they're, you know. Like, ooh, a, that, that, that photo was five buck. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Wait a minute, that photo was 2011. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I'm guilty. Like, yeah. 2011, then they're now weighing a buck ten. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, oh, it, it, it's just fucking absolute savage, uh, savagery on there, like. There's two two single boys at the table. Like, which ones do you have memberships for currently? Like, lay it out there for us. Uh, what, what Danny and I have committed relationship, man. Uh, tell it, give us an update. On what, are they hungry out there or what? Oh man, like <laughs> 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 sounds spoken like a true fucking committed relationship. <laughs> man. Like, what's it like out there, boys? <laughs> fucking tell me absolutely <laughs> everything about it. Tell, tell me, tell me how dirty they are. Like, <laughs> please, <laughs> like, tell me. Tell me yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's got his hand in his pocket <laughs> ominously <laughs> just fucking... <laughs> Shit, son. Excuse, excuse me while I tuck you, it up. You right there, Matty? Yeah, yeah. Allegedly. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah no, nah, I mean, I, I pretty much... I've used them all at one stage. Grinder. Grinder. Use that first and then realise yeah. that was the wrong thing. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Met up with a couple of dudes <laughs> and fucking yeah. yeah. bailed on Grinder. Like. After five or six meetups, I, w- yeah. I decided it wasn't for me and <laughs> nah, hung it up. But yeah, I've pretty much used them all, man. Like, they, they all have their pros and cons. I reckon um, it depends on if you're after just... Like, sm- oh, how do I politically say this? Yeah. Like, um, if you're after just like trying to lay birds, then like you, you probably want. <laughs> I'm glad you went with that option. That, <laughs> yeah, that, 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 how do I do this politically? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just want to you lay birds. It shows like, the uh, great uh, option. Yeah, the, yeah. the funny thing is, it's, it was a lot more politically <laughs> correct than what I was going to say. <laughs> Oh, there's a million shit. ways you could have said that. Yeah, forever. yeah. The, the original one that I had was really fucking average, let me tell you. So <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I cleaned it up with that one. <laughs> oh, anyway, we are we're fucking getting off track here. Which one anyway, we'll edit that out yeah. later. <laughs> yeah. No, um, but yeah, I, I pretty much used them all. It just really depends on, um, on, on what you're after. But I reckon um, there's one called like Flerve, which is sort of just real, real trashy sort of birds who you know are just effectively looking for some d and then there's sort of like plenty of i mean obviously there's birds looking for d on every single goddamn like, everywhere yeah exactly every app but um so these are available in the app store yeah like <laughs> <laughs> Le- leans in looking at his phone yeah like, that's uh, it allegedly yeah but it's just are like, you in the app store mate but that, that's one of the, that's one of the recent inventions of like um of history that has just made something so much easier because if you think back to sort of yesteryear even 20 years ago prior prior to the internet in the 80s whatever you still had to meet people organically like in a grocery store or in a club or in a um you know fill in the blank or whatever you know but but these days you really can just sit on your couch be tr- like flicking through photos of chicks and just be like, message this chick, hey, come over to my house. She comes over to your house. You slug a couple of red wines and a quarter of a Viagra and just boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess it depends on 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 the goal. Like, I think as a as a tool to have sex with people, it's probably a good thing. But in terms of like meeting somebody that you're going to have a valuable relationship yeah. with, oh, yeah. you're probably not. better off striking up an organic conversation with somebody in a grocery store than you are like, hey, you. Always, <laughs> yeah. always. But in, but, in, but in saying that, there's always, you know, the same people as you. If you're looking for something organic, then um. Yeah, there's always going to be somebody else that's got the app as well that's got the same mindset as you. Yeah, good yeah, point. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. If you are that, you know, really looking for someone, then you best bet. And it is. Just get a lot of them and just keep trolling. Yeah. yeah. So Fucking hedge your bets, Eventually you're going to find someone yeah. normal. Yeah. You're yeah. going to yeah. troll through a lot of rubbish, but... <laughs> <laughs> and it, <laughs> it's called playing the percentages. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it really is. Eddie, it, Eddie Murphy. Yeah. It's, it's some sort of numbers game in, in any context. Anyway. I've thrown my dick on the crap table many a night. One of the uh, best, one yeah. of the best. That's oh, honestly, I, I maintain that that's definitely one of the stand up, best stand up videos like ever oh, done, absolutely. ever done. It's, it still stands up as well. If you could watch watch them every now and then, once every sort of five years or something, now you can chuck it on. You'd uh, it's it, it's absolutely still funny. Between raw and delirious as yeah, well, I both yeah. both love them equally and for different reasons. But uh, what a fucking animal that guy is, especially at that age too. Like I've I've wikied that, and I think he did. Roar and Delirious, and, and for anybody who hasn't seen Roar or Delirious from Eddie Murphy, it's a stand-up video that you really should see. Yeah, give, give yourself a fucking uppercut yeah. if <laughs> you haven't yeah. already. Yeah, like, come on. Yeah, it is, it's it a is, classic. It is good really point. good. Well, you, really don't, you don't like to laugh? Like, <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell, come yeah. on. Yeah. Legendary, man. And, and, and it used to get flogged from video shops a lot. Really? Is yeah, that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right. that's what... Um, you? Yeah. yeah, I've definitely flogged him for a few copies in my yeah. time. For he sure, he was 26 when he did that. 26. Did, I thought he, he was raw. even younger. I thought he might. Well, oh, when raw. he did Delirious, he yeah. would have been younger. Yeah. 23 or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 23, I think. Yeah, when he did Delirious, that's crazy. Yeah, like, on uh, on VHS too. Like the fucking got a mate of ours used to work at the uh, at a video store back in high school, and they used to get like the odd bit of black market shit sort of returned in videos by accident and things like that. And he bought up this um. Our Violent World once, which was sort of like a uh, a really really dark documentary into all sorts of like tribal taboo shit, like how, like you literally like seeing these African ladies have miscarriages and stuff like that Ooh. in these video. Like just got sent through the video shop. We watched it up the coast at about fourteen years old. Out and out disturbing. Did you ever see that, Danny? Yeah, bro. Oh, I don't think I saw as much as you guys because I remember like hearing stories about it or whatever stuff that I didn't see. But I remember seeing like a. Uh, a preview to it or the intro or something like that where it was basically a quick grab of all that shit that was going on. But, um, yeah, early days, like, of <coughs> our youth and, like, the internet and access to that, those sorts of things. Like, I guess that was VHS, so that's different. But I remember, you know, we've talked about it before, going on Rotten.com and shit like that. It was some sort of curiosity, like, as a really young kid that, like, you went into, like, oh, you know, yeah, I'll watch this, but... I guess either from that experience or just having matured regardless, like, you know now, it's like, yeah, I can go see that shit if I want to, but why the fuck would I want to? Yeah, like, exactly. Why, you know, why the fuck would I want to go look up some fucking real gory dead body images or, you know, stuff like yeah. that? Like, real, real valid point, man. Real valid point. What do you reckon is the last real rough thing that you've looked up on the internet, Dunlop? Oh, it was a long time ago, like Danny said. Back in the day, there was a website, I can't remember what it was called, something cheese or something Steak like and that. cheese. Steak and cheese. And um, you just saw some of the roughest stuff ever, but um, I remember I went through a little period there where I was looking weird stuff up on that, and it just you get over it pretty quick, man. Yeah. There's some stuff there, you think, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, uh, fuck, I, I want to say like 15, 15, maybe 16, I don't know, l looking up. I remember seeing a fucking, it was obviously like a road accident that had happened somehow. I think somebody maybe got sandwiched between like a guardrail and a, and a vehicle, but it was basically just like a person in half on the ground. Like Ugh. here's the bottom, here's the legs and, and shit and there's the torso. Imagine being the guy or girl that that is you know, working for the police force or whatever that goes along and is effectively dragging those parts into a bag and bagging that up and well, you know what, mopping um, up the blood <coughs> off, a, off the road and just cleaning up after. Remember it was a real crazy thing when that um, the coach of the Adelaide Crows got stabbed by his son like yeah. earlier this year or last yeah. year. 2015, yeah. But um, I remember uh, there was a photo in the paper of the, um, the like investigator or whatever, the detective visiting the crime scene and obviously you know when there's still corpses laying around and stuff like that those guys have to come in and um those guys have to come in and fucking 
see that like you know nobody can move that crime scene or touch anything you know because they've got to see exactly how that body's laying and and you know mm. investigate the, the for and shit forensics and shit but the photo of this fucking like detective walking like after he's obviously seen the fucking crime scene he's walking back out in the street and he's got a suit on and shit and just like the stern look on his face and i was just looking at this guy just fucking studying this picture of him just thinking you know how much shit would he have fucking seen? Yeah. Like, how much yep. crazy shit would he have walked in on and just yep. been like, okay, so this is what happened here, you know? Like, yep. and look at it in a pragmatic and practical way. And yeah, be, you know, be real analytical and, and just be like, right, there's a slaughtered person there who's got their intestines hanging out in the bathtub. Like, oh, what man. else have we got around the room? You know? So, so, like, so he's he's the PTSD come, on a person yeah. like he, that. He's come through here with the knife. There's been a struggle here. The w- w- yep. there. He's yep. looking at it an entirely different way as to us walking in and going, oh, fuck. Yeah, oh, yeah. Throw up. Have like, you, have I'm you not ever, convinced I wouldn't throw up. Have you ever seen a dead body? Yes. Yes. A couple. A couple? Yeah. O- open casket funeral. Oh, That's right. I've still, never a dead, a still a dead body. Yeah. But, Shit, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I have. I've, ne- I, I've, I've, I've seen real badly injured people, but like never yeah. like um, dead bodies. What about you? Yeah, I can't recall yeah. um, a dead body that I've seen. So yeah. open caskets. Sure, I'm willing mate. to talk about. Yeah, 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 yeah. sure, <laughs> mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, look, look at that... Um, that crook stuff to watch. I can't even watch those medical shows on TV anymore. Eh? Yeah, or no, I'm not into news, those at all. Even on the news, and someone's broken their leg, like one of those ones that snaps up. I can't watch that. Anymore. True, Com- compound yeah. fractures. Yeah. I think it's a weird Ooh, thing. Shit. Some people are into watching surgeries. Eh? They're like, oh, yeah, look yeah. at that, and I you're like, oh, fuck, so yeah, 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 I don't know. I feel a bit sick. Yeah. Like, I definitely can't eat and watch that shit. It's two completely different things. But yeah, I would struggle. I would struggle to. Mm. Coming up next, football's greatest injuries. (laughs) 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 But it's funny though, like how, you know, the world of fucking fails and shit like that has has taken off and jackass and stuff like that, seeing people getting fucked up. As long as like, as long as it's not too gory, some of them can be like, "Shit, that dude might have died yeah. doing that." Yeah, but it's done yeah. in a funny way, so it's like, <laughs> "Yeah, look at that. <laughs> holy shit!" Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I remember there was, there was one of those videos going around the internet at the time. It was all those fails and big crashes and stuff, like people, you know, jumping off roofs and um, you know, off on skateboards and stuff like that, and, and messing themselves up. And then at the end of it, it said, "Oh, three of those people died." Oh shit, man! There was um, yeah. the, I still remember the worst jackass one I've seen out of all the ones like I've done countless over the years was the paper cutting in one of the movies where they were like slitting, getting like real hard pressed paper and just doing paper cuts in their mouth oh. and all their fingers and stuff. Oh, it made my I've skin crawl. That, yeah, oh. like yeah. just seeing oh, them in their mouth, just shit. open your mouth. Slice. Oh, 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 oh man, just un. Oh, yeah. look, and they were hating it too. Oh, like, exactly. <laughs> on all sorts of PCP and shit. Like, Mate, have you seen um, Bam recently? Oh, Bam Majera. Yeah, he is oh. aged like a mother. Really? Has yeah, he? How old would Bam be? He he might be late thirties. He might be pushing forties. Because he's always he, been a party animal. Did you ever watch right. uh, Viva like, La Bam? Yes. The, uh, yes. Uh, he's, he, Bam has turned into Phil. Really, he has really? turned into Phil, man. He's, he's fat. He's enormous. Like he would, he's fucking off the rails, completely hard. After Ryan Dunn passed away, he just got on. Every who, oh, Ryan yeah. Dunn was the dude that died Dunn. in the car accident. Yeah. The yeah. jackass he, he's guy he's with gone, the beard. He has just gone off the fucking rails. Wow. Yeah, not, not coping with it at all on all sorts of prescription pills, coke, oh, alcohol. Shit, that like, never ends well. That, yeah, no, nothing, nothing alleged there. Like, there's yeah. the proofs in the pudding when you see this guy. Like, yeah, he was on that celebrity rehab or some shit. Like, I only saw the preview to it. No, I he he was it. getting his own program on VH1 about it. Yeah, that was the thing that I'd sent you on online. It was uh, like the video of him and he's like, "What? Your best friend just dies? Like, uh, that's just not fair." Like, but he looks like absolute yeah, shit. Like you look he, at him in you know saying it, like, Jackass Two and stuff like that, and he looks like you know just the s- same dude that he did, but a bit like more rad and grown up and shit like that. And then, but you see him now, and it's like, oh, you're starting to look like an old man that's like struggling. Like mm. old man's maybe fucking a bit extreme, like, but uh, he's aged yeah, considerably. Yeah, and that lifestyle would do it to you too. You know, you you. 
the absolutely nothing comes for free in, in that lifestyle of pain pills and heaps of booze oh, and heaps of coke and you know all that sort of stuff. Like the life that he would have lived for the last 10 to 15 years. Oh, like those, yeah. those dudes would have so many fucking injuries and just... Gang bangs under their belt. Stories <laughs> for oh, days. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Days. Oh, stories for days. You could talk to someone like that and, and just be yeah. blown away. For That's just when we could do a three-hour podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Talking, talking mm. to Knoxville about the amount of arse that he got oh, on tour. Oh, like, come holy on. shit. And just Astronomical. The, the caliber of, of chicks that you would get to, you yeah. know? Like, it wouldn't just be, you know, arse, but it would be freaky arse that would be willing to do out the land yeah. shit, but it would be, like, of a real high caliber. I'm, go- so yeah. I'm going back with these crazy good, guys. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. just just the type of guys they obviously are. Everything yeah. they did is going to be extreme, so they're, they're not going to have a couple of beers, they're going to have a thousand. They're yeah. Not, they're not going to do a little bit of coke, they're yeah. going to do, like, three grand. And <laughs> to- together as Seems well. It's like a really though. precise amount, Joe. In, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. in one line. I've, I've heard they come in grand. <laughs> yeah. is, is three a lot? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wonder what that looks like. like, like <laughs> in the um, yeah, fuck, mate. That they would be, and as you say, they're doing substances and stuff. That means they like doing shit together, which means they're fucking banging in the same room, mm. like six nights a week. There would be so, <laughs> there would be so much outlandish shit that would go on. I mean, but party boy, that, party they, boy, going out in yeah. his prime. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, yeah. If, if you were living that Dan Blazarian lifestyle, you would you would definitely sort of you'd be. A product of exactly what he is in terms of ha- had a couple of heart attacks, you know, all that sort of stuff, you know. Dan Bilzerian's had heart attacks. Oh, have you ever not heard that no. story, bro? He's like had like two major heart surgeries or whatever in his life thus far, like really? just just from being a cokehead back in the yeah. day and and you know just pushing and himself now, way too hard. Yeah, and yeah, on the he, TRT. Hard oh, as well. he, had, he had a story of him taking uh, 100 mil Viagra after like a big ecstasy binge Ooh. and uh, went went to look in the mirror like he was ba- banging away just like not feeling anything and the chick's like oi fucking like are you are you okay you got you going all red and he went and looked in the mirror and he's like holy shit like fucking call nine on call nine <laughs> like, th- this isn't good holy shit what do you mean in, in the face yeah uh, all in his body and shit like just reckons his body was just so red and like it was just like a ha- body was just Hectic. overheating or whatever yeah. and uh went down to that thing they're like yeah you had a heart attack like you're, you're okay but you, yeah, you've right. had yeah. one it's literally yeah. like you know when you're fucking pushing an old car up a hill and then like the yeah. you know the temperature gauge just starts going and shit then yeah. dropping a hundred milligram bluey in the tank Ooh. <laughs> shit <laughs> Jing. yeah and imagine just being like geared geared on that so you know like not only would you have this you know baseball bat hard dick that you like couldn't get down you know if you wanted to but you'd also have this insatiable crazy appetite for it where you were just willing to you know you were just willing to go mm. uh, oh yeah uh, anyway that'd be a furious no. state probably not real uh flush of the girl yeah. but shit <laughs> 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 you'd, you'd feel good about yourself after <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i should have got m- i've got my hand in my pocket again like, <laughs> <laughs> how'd that, they get there was that, like, was that that baseball call <laughs> <laughs> Shit, yeah. yeah. Louisville slugger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, crazy how there's a pill for everything now, though. You know, the, effectively, if you got a, if you got a problem now, you can pretty much get a pill for it. You know, or there's some sort of medication that you can take for it. They've just effectively invented something for everything, whether it's a a, a band aid effect or whether it's something to assist with it. There's pretty much something for everything around these days. And you're just yeah. scraping the surface with that shit too. That's yeah. the best part about yeah, it. Yeah, just taken off. Yeah, mm. exactly. Well, it's such a seductive idea, you know. It's like you know, there's your baseline that you have as a fucking human being, as a as that particular animal organism, or whatever. And then you can take something that's for a specific cause to enhance a certain aspect of you. And it's like, I don't have to do a fucking thing to work for this. I just like swallow Mm. this pill and all of a sudden the pain goes away. Or I swallow this pill and all of a sudden it's like I'm focused or, you know, like I'm having a good time. I feel socially sweet. Like, Mm. and it's just, uh, it's, it's fucking, you can see why it's taken off so much with human beings because it's just such a... Like an easy, easy convenient. idea, I guess. Convenient, yeah. What what form, if you had to guess, would you say that the that human beings would have taken on in another hundred years, or probably not a hundred years, because obviously that would be, but like something like another two, three, four, five hundred years type thing. Like where do, where do you think, if you had to guess, like that that humanity would would sort of be I w- I would even a hundred years. 
yeah, have evolved. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I think fucking obviously the way we're heading is integrating more and more with technology. But to what end? Who fucking knows? (coughs) Excuse me. Like, because there's the whole field of, you know, excuse me, of us creating artificial intelligence that's completely, you know, inorganic. And then there's the idea of us taking our own biology and sticking microchips in ourselves and like enhancing and so, you know. Transhumanism and stuff. Yeah, that sort of shit. Like, there's, you know, people growing fucking human organs inside pigs and stuff like that with DNA. Is that kind of, you know, (coughs) that's technology again, but it's, you know, it's a fucking different quasi thing. Like, I don't know. There's so many different areas that we're heading, but I think ultimately we're going to change ourselves, like, before nature changes us because evolution is such a long fucking process that like you won't see that much change in a hundred years and like maybe some evolutionary change in 500 years i don't know i I even i heard some or read someone the other day that um even though it's it's a long process that even um against that like evolution has actually slowed down uh, as well because of technology and stuff so yeah Obviously, evolution um, is caused from your environment and, yeah. and, and what's yeah. around you. And yeah. back in the day when they didn't have technology, the environment sort of had a, played a big part. But now, now, like you said right. before, we've got all the um, technology around the place that's doing a lot of stuff for us. We don't really need to change because well, we're not living a challenge. We're, we're building, life, we're building yeah. tools to do everything yeah. rather than our, our bodies having to. It's like I was, I was going to make the point of like uh, cyber sex dolls and stuff like that could slow down productivity of humanity straight up like mm. <laughs> if, you, if you have guys just bunk yeah. it, bunk it down with all of their technology in the house and a absolutely lifelike real doll in like Swedish 100 years yeah. buddy but if there's yeah. if there's a market for that if there's dudes staying at home doing that then there's scientists there creating those products making bank that's yeah. like yeah. you yeah. know yeah. <coughs> and you like that's fucking real interesting about like you know the necessity to evolve because it's survival of the fittest right and yeah. like we live a life now where it's you know survival of the richest basically mm-hmm. like it's you don't have to evolve to fucking fix your like to you know fix any issues with your environment at all it's basically like you're birthed into this house where you have food and shelter like your whole time and then you're told to go get a job and these sort of abstract concepts of like I'm fucking sitting in an office working for a paycheck so that I can then take that money to spend on things that I enjoy, which is so disconnected from, like, the human organism aspect of a fucking human being, like the animal part. Well, we've just invented... We've just invented currency. So we've... And and that's probably... We haven't... I mean, human beings have invented that, but, you know, before Mm. that it was sort of like trade and, you know, you would trade spices and, and, you know, myrrh and whatever that other crap. Bartering. And before before that you would hunt hunt and gather your shit. Exactly, Mm. yeah, you would fucking kill stuff. So we've moved away from that, like, you know, that instinctual sort of, like, killing stuff. And I, I always think it's fucking interesting that a woman still carries out her basic biological function majoritively which is to have children and shit like that but really the modern man like that's why you know we have hunting clubs and fucking shit like that so people can go and try and connect with those like primal like aspects of life because you really don't need to like you go to the grocery store you buy your shit you you work your job like it's not really you know any kind of connection with that with that primal sort of but it's gotten a lot easier (laughs) that's why people go pay go pay 300 grand to go put one in cecil like yeah Yeah, Yeah. exactly yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. there's a whole different box of frogs and and that's the sort of the weird one is that in in one side of the coin that has like a whole huge sustainability aspect to it where you know where obviously they (coughs) give back to sort of the the local wildlife people and it sounds so counterintuitive but it's it's absolutely true over there that if it doesn't have sort of a price tag on it, that it really doesn't have any reason to to be sustained. Yeah, and there's that like I, I hear that argument about hunting big game and stuff like that, and like it is true, like it is true that you know most of the money for conservation comes from hunting and stuff like that. But it's also it's not like these hunters are giving charitable donations and shit like that. They're taxed to do these like things to go into the parks and shit like that. And through the revenue that they raise by taxing people, like all kinds of different shit that like want to go and do that. Like that's how they make all that money. And I think the thing that like if you're an environmentalist or somebody who's fond of animals or whatever and you think it's like, you know, a fucking weird thing to want to go out and kill a fucking I- a beautiful endangered animal and shit like that, that it's kind of 
yeah, that's all well and good. And it is, it is good that that money, you know, gets put back into conservation and stuff like that. But what is it about... <coughs> And, you know, I'm, I'm a meat eater, so I fucking 100% have to own the fact that, you know, like I'm responsible for the death of a lot of animals and shit like that. But when there's no sort of, you know, necessity of eating something to survive and it's purely out of killing something and putting a fucking trophy on, on your wall and shit, what is that in the human psychology that's like driving Wants that? Wants to do know? that. Is, yeah. that, is that a good moral judgment is, I think, the, you know, the point of view that I take in, in regards to that. And I know fucking, you know, there's the counter, counter arguments up the yin yang to that, but I just think, um, you know, I guess it's something that I can't relate to. I can't relate to the idea of seeing this fucking, and I've, you know, loved big cats ever since I was a fucking little kid and shit like that. And just, you know, thinking about how magnificent some of these animals are and fucking terrifying too. Like, don't get me wrong. Oh, if you badass. Were like, if you were like in the, in the jungle fucking trying to, trying to camp down with a spear to protect your family and shit, shit, yeah, you'd be killing those big cats. Yeah. But See the like, you're a fucking white, white yank like flying over there to fucking pay bank to fucking shoot, you shoot Cecil. I, I, I don't know. Did mm. you see the big cat in China this week, Jack, that lady? Yes. Have you seen the actual footage of oh that? Oh Absolutely God. terrifying. Yeah. Have you, have you seen that? Oh, I saw a snippet of it. That yeah. uh, one, one got away, and then they, they yeah. ginger- killed the other one. This yeah. lady, if for anyone who hasn't seen that video, it's just this lady who is having a tantrum. You know, obviously an argument in the car with her partner, who's a, a dude, and then she just bails out of the car in this wildlife oh, reserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And were they? I thought they were staff. No, 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 no. no, no, no. The, the no. caption, anyway, it was on Joe Rogan's Instagram. Is that that one? No, yes. was it? That's they, the one yeah, he, he yeah, was yeah. talking about. He yeah. posted. He posted a video on his instagram of um somebody going through like a wildlife park and allegedly this fucking couple in the car are having an argument excuse me all these beers and the and the woman's gotten out of the car in a fit of rage walks around to the you know the passenger side or the driver's side whichever side the dude was sitting on and opens the door and starts like giving him a serve standing out of the car and then you just see this tiger jump up and just like grab her just fucking whoosh her her into gone the garden, like, and off and just drags her away like she is nothing you know yeah. just really swift as a motherfucker yeah, like probably a 50 60 kilo yeah, buck 10 yeah that's just like <laughs> that's just like the most indicative thing of the you know like we've talked about it before how you get fucking tunnel vision and everybody thinks like all about their problems and shit like that but it's like the reality of it is that we are part of the food chain we just live this disconnected life where we're sitting here podcasting and fucking well, talking about we, you know, we've just we've just gotten more intelligent that's all is, is like if, if it was a f- battle of physical prowess we would lose every time because you know we've effectively just gotten the knowledge to develop tools and tools, get yeah. boats and you know things that we can <coughs> effectively outsmart these animals with so that we can stay alive in the food chain because what's, what's to stop animals evolving to be intelligent enough to fight yeah, back i don't know to, i mean obviously what? we're evolving like we're obviously going to evolve at this you'd think at the same rate so we're going to get smarter as well yeah but why don't they if we live long enough lions and tigers are going to evolve i mean i don't know if they can or not but you'd think that well, it's possible animals evolve i mean they, they've evolved over millions of years into different forms but i mean they they don't seem to have evolved very far yeah. no in in comparison to humans anyway how we've the all the advancements and all the knowledge that we've effectively gained by what we've been doing over the last however long eleven thousand years human beings have I don't, I don't think we have any uh, evolutionary biology biologist Experience, fucking yeah, no. audience, but uh, if they were, they'd probably be fucking tearing their hair out right now. <laughs> 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 Fuck you, idiots! Talking <laughs> yeah, yeah. No clue whatsoever. <laughs> I think it's like eleven thousand years. I love years. thinking about that sort of shit, though. I like you know fucking. It's just crazy. You just this tiny little snippet that we have like of life basically Mm. you know and you you hear about history and you fucking hear about you know all these theories of what what generations will be to come and shit like that but it's like we have this tiny little fucking window that's all we have and it's just like (coughs) just a little bit of time in order to like learn a lot of that shit and like participate in life a little bit and then sooner or later fuck it's like shit the last 10 years of my life just went real fucking quick yeah like nearly 30 now that's it man and and just the the concept of the that at any stage in that little bit that you get it can just be all over in a heartbeat you know Mm -hmm. someone can just pretty much like flick the switch and then just boom you know like it it, that's that's your bit up get hit by a fucking bus chasing pokemon across the street yeah (laughs) 
th- that is some stupid shit. Has anyone played that here? <laughs> no, no. Oh, yeah, I, had a, I have. I had a buddy have that, that <laughs> showed me the app. Yeah. yeah. I've I've seen the app. Have I caught any Pokemon? No. <laughs> I've, I've seen it and how it, how it looks on yeah, the screen yeah. and stuff. But uh, I could have guessed out of everyone here, you would have had a crap. <laughs> yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. Explain explain the concept to me. Well, I don't get apparently, it. Apparently, um, uh, Nintendo were like struggling massively in their market share, and in the space of a fucking week, they added nine billion to their market share Woo, with shit. this app. So it was like um, I, I heard it. Nintendo aren't even the ones that made it. Yeah, they I had their know. name on it, so their yeah. things have plummeted again because people have realised it's not actually a Nintendo app. Oh, oh. Okay. So, so somebody else know. developed the app, I think. Yeah, because there was no Nintendo affiliated with it on the homepage. Like I still have it on the iPhone. Like, right. it's, um, you still have it. Yeah, but um, <laughs> it's actually on now. Actually, <laughs> I've got to go, boys. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a Pikachu out the front. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, holy shit! There's a fucking Charizard in here. Like, oh. <laughs> I, I never even actually watched it. Was it must have been? It was on Cheese TV and Channel Two. It was. It was after. It was after your. It was after our time. Like I, I remember, like friends getting getting into Pokemon's and shit like that. But I was yep. never about. Well, yeah, it. I must have just missed it by a couple yeah. of years. Man. But it's you're, you're on Sunrise by then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's basically made a resurgence, like in uh, in this app, because they've designed something that works with Google Maps, where you basically upload your, you know, the area that you live in, your current location or whatever, as the level of the game, and then it makes you sort of like go out into your environment and with Google Maps you find like you find these different Pokemons and shit and apparently they have like certain landmarks like churches apparently are gyms so that's where people go to like work out their Pokemon and stuff like that and they'll they were saying that, you know, people will have these spots that might have used to have been a church, but they fucking live in a house there now and they've got all these fucking people at the front <laughs> of their house at all kinds of hours, like, on their phones and shit, and they're just like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. And there's what people it, yeah. in, like, um, you know, other countries that have, um, like, seen these spots and then are going to, like, jack people for their fucking iPhones and shit like that. And, like, they ha- apparently they had their first death the other day, like, yeah. people chasing shit. Guatemala. Guatemala. Guatemala walked in on some gorillas in there, like not uh, like G U E R I L W L A gorillas, and uh, out in the bush, this sort of militia, and uh, fucking bang bang, you're dead. Eesh, shit. Yeah, was it worth it for that fucking blastoise? Like, I don't yeah. think so. Like, Hell yeah. Crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it seems to have just been something that has absolutely exploded in popularity and has effectively taken over the world within a, like the really, last month really or two. Quickly, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's but insane. crazy, it, and it's gone as quick as it came too you know at the same time people there was so many yeah there was absolute fad where look i've downloaded it but i haven't used it Mm. how many other people out there are like like me was it free did you have to pay for it free completely free free. wow wow yeah wouldn't wouldn't have paid for that but yeah they're talking (laughs) like i listened to a podcast the other day where i think red band actually was talking about it and he was saying how basically fucking google now man have got you know everybody's entire living room, their house, like their surrounding areas all mapped out because they've been walking around basically with the fucking camera on, you know, like like filming all of their surroundings and shit. And between that and the Snapchat filters where like the perfect is, yeah. facial, facial recognition and shit like that, they're just like, they would have enough to profile the fuck out of anybody if they yeah. needed to, yeah. like national security wise. Those, those Snapchat filters are an absolute like disservice <laughs> for getting catfished on those um, dating apps <laughs> too. Oh, it's like people put oh, those filtered Jesus. photos up and shit. Definitely. Chicks yeah. u- love to use those filters with the butterflies around their head <laughs> yeah. or like the rainbow or whatever oh, it is. And called and just, out. Yeah, called exactly. Out. We and know what you're up to, girls. Yeah, we know exactly. what you're doing. Yeah, no, no, no good whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> what so do you reckon's the most like awkward um, meeting that you've had from like a, a, a potential lead uh, from an online app? I reckon I've only probably like had one date that I would probably constitute as a bit of a shocker and it was just simply because like this chick just <clears throat> did not want to even like reciprocate with any conversation and, right. and whatnot. And then I was just like assuming that the date had really gone badly and I didn't even like want to pursue dating this girl anyway but ended up just sort of you know presuming that the date was over and just being like well you know it was it was nice to have a drink with you I'll, ca- I'll catch you later sort of thing and then she was like I thought we were going to have dinner. And I was just like thinking to uh. myself, what the fuck? Like, so you'd had a drink by this point, just one drink? Oh, or? like had like probably two or three and just uh. been treading water with oh. the, like the entire conversation. Just like all me, her just giving me like closed responses and then just me going, right, this girl is just totally not interested. Awesome because I'm not interested either. 
And then just like at the end of the drinks, like me just like had been there for about 30, 40 minutes. You know, thanks. Well, it was really nice to meet you. Thanks for a drink, blah, blah, blah. I'll catch you later. And she just like uh, comes out with, I thought we were going to go to dinner. And I was just like, um, like, what are you giving me here? Yeah, like? we can we, we can definitely go to dinner. Like, um, And then we ended up like going to dinner and oh. just sitting down for another hour where I was just like <laughs> staring at my food, just thinking, fuck, no. is it, is it, too, is it too quick that's to get the bill? Oh. Oh. That was the only like brutal one that I can remember where I was just thinking, get me the fuck out of here. This yeah. sucks, you know? Definitely, man. Yeah. And you happen to, the habit with those type of apps as well, you're always spinning a big game on those things too. Like, yeah. Like oh, I, yeah. I kn- know myself personally and had, like, had encounters on the past there just promising the absolute <laughs> world, world, world to people and just <laughs> not delivering, not delivering uh, in the slightest. And yeah. it's like, ooh. Oh, yeah, with, like, Every, every every guy that has ever walked the earth who has done social like social dating and stuff knows that that's true for that's sure. It. Is that sometimes as a guy you just have plans to form and it, you just don't. And it's the same for the girls as well. Like I've I've seen girls on those type of apps just talk huge game of all the things that they're going to do to you. And yeah, the variety of and shit it and turns like out real all those no photos, one. and then you meet, meet them in person, <laughs> and there's just nothing there. Like b- behind a camera and a keyboard, hey, they're a freak. But if it comes to when push comes to shove, it's, oh, well, it's I'm, the whole, I'm conservative. It's the whole anonymous thing, isn't it? It's it like is. people, you know, have this ability to be somebody that they're not. And that's a lot of what social media is. It's a created image that people come up with. And like the whole, the dating aspect of that and then going to meet somebody, it's like, okay, this is, you know, what you've put on. And then you go meet them. They've got all the, the Snapchat filters and shit. And then you go meet them and they, you know, you're staring at your shoes for a fucking hour waiting for them to like be able to hold a conversation like yeah that's, that's cool. like i don't know for, for me it's like i feel like there's too much of an agenda like with you know people on those on those apps and shit like that and it's so, it's so like falsified like reality that it's just oh it's, it's ex- ex- exhausting making exhausting is the fucking perfect exhausting word. making the same conversation over and over again so ex- ex- exhausting chris like th- this week is the bachelor has just started again i'll put my hand up i'm first one to willing to admit that, that i watched the bachelor and we've been watching this shit this week and it would be indescribable to be him in that position with 22 women that are, some of them are just looking to try and get famous and try and get that spot as a yeah. guest on, get pa- on Getaway. Paid or actors. Like, yeah, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. That, that sort of shit. And uh, to watch him have to be on constantly when there's 22 people there to have to talk to, he's, it would be such a tough gig. Yeah, oh, I yeah. couldn't Man. think of anything worse than being on that, like being the bachelor. It like would a be brutal. Up concept, I reckon. Yeah, for it's sure, you're just, you're just there to almost embarrass. How many people are there? Like twenty or something. Twenty-two. It starts with. And we're down to the seventeen left now. Yeah, oh. so there's five gone already. So you, you're basically there to embarrass twenty-one people, and then even that last one, like the chances of you coming out of that and you and you realise that oh he's, you know, had a, yeah. a pretty good connection with a, a couple of the other chicks as well, like. I'm just the last one standing. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well yeah. what is was fucking really hilarious is what? like uh, on the first episode or whatever, they've got um they've got like the how many 20, 20, 20, 20 22. 22 chicks lined up, <laughs> and like I think dead set bro. <laughs> oh, <yeah. coughs> this guy's fucking standing there with a table full of roses. These chicks are all standing in like an auditorium fucking grandstand, just yeah, like yeah. standing there looking as pretty as they can in the hope that he's going to give them a rose and they're not going to be one of the two that yeah. are left there at the yeah. end. It's like, like getting struggling. picked for the uh, the softball team at school exactly. or something. No one wants to be last, yeah. man. No one wants to be last, God. except it's on national TV and we're talking yeah. ratings of like <laughs> in, in excess of like one and a half million yeah. watched it last Absolutely night. Absolutely like brutal. brutal. It yeah. rates Especially and, uh, on the, the first week before you, he can't possibly know them well enough. So no. he's basically it's, going on face yeah, value. So he's like, like, oh. I'm, yeah. I'm one of the two Ugh. ugliest people here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no hiding. It's like, it's like live Tinder. Yeah. 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 Oh, Ooh. Ooh. what a great Ooh. way yeah. to exactly. describe it. There was one chick from Brisbane who like was on there the whole time swearing up a storm. That was like a thing that they kept focusing on was like yeah. she had a real potty mouth. And um, to her fucking credit, man, like she's standing there in the auditorium waiting to get picked. And you can just tell in her mind she's going, you know what? fuck this, like, and just tapped out, walked out of the thing, went, you know, you're a real nice bloke, but I can't do this fucking shit. Like, obviously yeah. s- signed up for the show, thought, yeah, I'm fucking 
fucking give it a crack. Why not? Friends encouraged her and fucking whatever else. And then like got on and did the first episode and a bit of the awkwardness like with these chicks and shit. And then just got to that last bit where she's standing like a, in a fucking meat market yeah, and yeah. just like tapped out. And so shout out to Vinteo if you're out there listening. <laughs> get, yeah, just, sl- just slide uh, into the DM of our boy Weary over here. We'll look <laughs> after you. <laughs> Do those... Um, did the girls know who he is before they joined up? No, no, no they didn't oh. because a lot of them got out of the limousines and when they went, oh, I hoped it was you because there was rumours about before they would have signed up in the casting that it may have been him. He would got involved in the audition process, but it ended up being confirmed. And the, that some makes of them it were even excited. more messed up, I reckon, because there's a chance that all of them were like, oh, and it is. And even harder because some of them would have seen him like, yes, and some of them would have gone, oh, Richie, yeah. like Who is he? They don't, man. So they're they're he's, a, he's a contestant from last year. Or do, do you reckon they get caught up in the hype of it? No, like, get, he's the hottest thing ever. They get so yeah. fucking caught up in it. And it's like they're in this, um, you know, competition with each other. Yeah, it's a so competition. It's like so everyone wants to win. Even if they're not into him, they're exactly. like, oh, I still want to win. Exactly. And then You're in direct competition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, then they get to the end and they've won. Like, oh, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that into this guy. Yeah. But like, it's as Maddie's saying, like, to watch this guy, like, and to to try and imagine putting yourself in his position. And he's a pretty fucking nervous sort of bumbling guy as it is, man. Who's and this? This is The Bachelor. Oh, yeah. This Richie bloke. And um, and you put him in this situation where he's literally at a dinner party with fucking camera crews and everything everywhere. You know that this is national broadcast and there's 20 fucking chicks there that you have to like get around and talk to each of them and do the same conversation like you would in, in, in um, Tinder or whatever. Yep. And fucking like, but still keep your banter good enough that it's like funny on TV, but work with all these different personalities yeah. and shit. And he's just a tap dancing bear like... You were just thinking, fuck, man, imagine how, like, sweet that beer would be at the end of the night oh, and just yeah. be like, thank fuck, that's over. Yeah, definitely. You, you'd almost be looking forward to just being back on your own. Oh, yeah. You'd oh. be like, I'm fucking tapping out on yeah. this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not even going to jerk off tonight, I'm that <laughs> tired. <laughs> get, 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 one, uh, get, get, like, uh, take the sluttiest one into the dunnies or whatever, oh. then go, go, go <laughs> back Mate, to I'll it, go back home. Uh, d- take that, that, the that sluttiest that, yeah. one into the dunnies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the most politically yeah, correct yeah, way yeah, you could yeah. have thought of that yeah. one, too? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Can't That's the thing. Can't believe you haven't had any more success on Tinder. Do you think that. On the Bachelor, though, that d- is he sleeping with any of them? I'd say, I'd say you'd have to. Hundred percent oh. after the show, he would absolutely clean house. I, I guarantee that you know that <laughs> <laughs> they would, they would, they would, they would after he's proposed, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's gonna no, wreck oh, all of them. But <laughs> he they, would they, wreck they, shop. They never stay together for lo- they never stay together for long. Like let's face it, yeah, I, yeah. I, I can't speak for uh, first hand knowledge, but I would say that Mate, the strike rate's two, not two good. Out of yeah, the strike rate's not good. Two out of three seasons of the Australian one, they're engaged. Two out of three. Yeah, yeah, w- wasn't one of them. Hitting home runs. One of them wasn't oh. with the one that won. True. But Blake, Bingo. Blake was the fucking dude of the Bachelor season one for the blokes out here. He uh, he got engaged in South Africa at the finale. Came back by the time the finale aired, he was he had broken up with her and he was dating the chick that came third. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see that. That's and that now it's dusted. Like they're yep. Done. But I think it was probably a setup for the fact that they wanted the good. Aussie chick to get shafted so that they could bring her back to be the bachelorette for the following yeah. season because it created tension. Yeah, Jeez. and you and you really wouldn't know how much of us that Blake bloke have got paid to look like an absolute tosser. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. A a he a must lot, have known that a he lot. He got a gig on The Apprentice after that. If yeah. you're down for your that's trashy right. TV, yeah, he got, um, <laughs> yeah, he got fucking called out on that. That's, and that's on a time, different network he? too. Apprentice was on nine, that was on ten, so cross pollinated. <laughs> he got after it. He was a weird dude. That got that like Max Markson in his corner and uh, look <laughs> out. <laughs> oh man! I, I, don't, I really don't think you'd probably get that much coin though from those sort of things. Like, I think you'd, they just replace your normal income for as long as the TV no, runs. No, I reckon. I reckon he'd get well and truly looked after. All the media appearances. Yeah. He's yeah, going on the project. True, yeah, he's doing all this sort true, of shit. That's to, true. to a certain yeah, point, a though, certain man. Point. Like um, it would dry up. You know, a lot of those a lot of those chicks go on there like as a contestant, thinking that you know oh, I'm going to get mad famous and shit. And I saw one of the like you know the most sort of notorious personalities from the previous season was on Celebrity Fucking Family Feud the other day, where they just drag out a bunch of like Channel Ten numpties and just fucking you know call it, call it a celebrity show. It's so like you know, one of the girls. I don't reckon she's making bank to be honest. Yeah. I reckon she yeah, needs a day job. One of the girls. <laughs> one of the girls off the Bachelor from last season was hoping to break through with a media career. 
and he's now driving around one of the uh, Holden station wagons for Nova. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, killing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Those but yeah, I mean, that's what you can hope for, you know, like a C grade status. Yeah. Like, no. Get a radio show. Mate, fucking, we're all making more dough than her here. Like, <laughs> 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 Those bachelor guys must be pretty loaded already, though, right? Like they're not going to. Yeah, you got you got to be desirable. I'm sure. Flipping I reckon yeah. you're just <laughs> with, with, yeah. Yeah. With, with your application, submit your last five tax returns. Like that, yeah. I reckon that would probably help too. Either that, or you're just like some ridiculously good-looking dude who is flipping burgers at McDonald's, and then they just peddle a story about how you're some top hotshot lawyer in yeah. you know some top firm or something like that. Yeah, you know? war widow, <laughs> <laughs> mooch and war widow. <laughs> Oh, uh, too many Simpsons references. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. gold. Oh, it's been a good potty, boys. We'll um, we'll probably wrap it up there. But um, what are you what are you boys up to for the rest of the weekend, Matty? What are you doing? We're going to podcast up again on Sunday. Yeah. Obviously, uh, prior to two hundred one or or perhaps post. We're not sure yet, but um, stay tuned. So uh, who's who's the final picks? What do you reckon? I'm go- I'm going to go Woodley. Just uh, miles on the clock for um for Lawler. I reckon uh, you know it could be it could be one of those cases of an upset of a of a long streak. That's what I'm going with. I think probably like I think I'm going to stick with Robbie. I think that he still has a few more good fights in him. You know he hasn't really he's been rocked a couple of bit times in his last couple of fights, but I think that he's too aggressive for Tyron Woodley, and I yep. think that he'll overwhelm him and and all that sort of stuff. I'm so I'm going to go with I'm, him. I'm the same. Lola for me. I think he, I think he gets it done and. Uh, Thanks for coming on, Jared. You've, you've done well in your first Thanks, one, mate. mate. Well, yeah, no, it's, it's been, been a pleasure. A, always a pleasure, Open never a chore. With, bro. Always a pleasure, never a chore with you, Jared. Thanks for listening in, peeps. We'll, uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Peace. Peace.